Good afternoon, dear moderators. You can start the session now. Hi, a very good afternoon to everyone. My name is Architect Lama Yi, and together with me, we have Architect Ming, and we are the moderator for this. With us today. Um, before I proceed with the presentation by Architect Nina, let me just give some short description about Architect Nina. Architect Nina graduated from USM in 2000 and she worked in a few architecture firms and organizations which including MBBP. And it was a good training ground for her to acquire some basic legal knowledge. Architect Nina is currently a principal of the Bunko Architect with her multidisciplinary training background and her inclinations toward art and nature. She's now working on most of the project that related to nature and ecotourism. So today, architect Nina will talk about transforming virgin site to ecotourism destination, where she will talk about the planning and also the making of Boulder Valley glamping and event space, uh, actors plot private farmstead, and also eco hotels and villa. So to all the participants, if you have any question to the speaker, please press the Q&A button appear on your screen and type your question inside. And please do not type in the chat column. Also, a gentle reminder to all participants, LAM CPD point require continuous participation. Therefore, a sign-in code and a sign-out code will pop up on the screen throughout the section. And at the end of the section, there will be a link that leads you to the page to fill in your attendance in order to complete your participant record. So also, we will have a photo section together with the speaker at the end of the Seminar. So please stay back. So without further ado, I would like to invite our speaker today, Architect Nina, to present on her paper. Architect Nina, hand over to you. Hi, thank you, Mei Yi. Hi, I'm Nina. Thanks to the Board of Architects for inviting me to participate in the CPD Unlimited Talk. I'm very excited about it. And today I'm going to share with you my experiences in the making of ecotourism projects. And I've done a similar seminar in uh, the Boulder Valley Glamping with a site visit, and today's session is online. So I'm planning to uh, take you to a virtual site visit to the Boulder Valley Glamping and the Acre Plots uh, Farm State. Let me bring you to the share screen and enjoy the video. Hi, welcome to my video. This is Boulder Valley Glamping. The site is around 10 hectares, but the overall building footprint is only 3.2% of the entire site, which is 3,200 square meter. There are 15 units of tented villas and 10 units of safari tents and other supporting facilities. And the rest of the land is kept untouched. Boulder Valley Glamping is situated along the Balik Pulau, Telobahang, Agro and Ecotourism Belt. This project is named after its physical site, which is a Boulder Valley by itself. Along the Agro and Ecotourism Belt, there are many interesting tourism spots like Telobahang National Park, Tropical Spices Garden, Escape Adventure and Water Theme Park, Antopia Butterfly Farm, Tropical Fruit Farm, the Balik Pulau Durian Trail, and the Round Island Cycling Path. The land was a rubber estate which was abandoned for more than 30 years. It was without existence of any infrastructure, there was no access, driveway, water, and electricity supply nor sewage system. So initially, there was no water supply, there was only raw water main along Jalan Teluk Bahang. This video is showing drilling of tube well on site. 
He drew through the ground as deep as 200 feet in order to get underground water. In the later stage, he appealed to the state authority and PBA, and then the site was connected with treated water. There were many technical difficulties in developing a project in a remote location like this. It was very difficult to do planning works on drawing board due to its large test size and limited information that can be retrieved from the surveyor plan. Planning on drawing was merely as indication. The actual setting out of platforms and most of the construction works have to be determined on site. To resolve this, we numbered mature trees and giant boulders to enable the team to identify their physical location during planning and construction stage. The nature gave us hints to decide, so we have to observe and to listen to the nature at all times. Besides building very basic accommodations and facilities, 80% of the works were to create paths and tidying up the site, so we started to clear the undergrowth. Due to inexistence of any excess, the construction works have become more difficult, especially during delivery of material. To deliver material downhill, we created shoots, but to deliver material uphill, building a pulley was not possible, so the workers have to queue in a row to pass the material by manpower. Many machinery and extensive manpower were used. The construction works were done in a very primitive method and labour intensive. This has prolonged the construction period and escalated the construction cost. In order to facilitate the people to return to the nature, basic accommodations and facilities with modern comfort must be provided. So for the accommodation, we have chosen tents or tented villas, but huge and comfortable ones. The use of canvas itself gives a sense of temporary, native, old, undeveloped, the earliest, outdoor, fundamental, basic, but essential. To ensure visitors' convenience and comfort, we have put in facilities and amenities we can find at home, like comfortable beds, fan and aircon, fridge, safe, water heater, and etc. This is the black monolithic netting for ventilation, views, and to prevent mosquitoes, while the transparent sheet is meant for aircon purpose, to prevent cold air from running out and also to prevent rain from coming in. To further enhance the concept, pop-up tents are used at the balcony for the children who want to experience staying in a tent while the parents are enjoying comfortable beds luxuriously in the huge tent. In this project, not much architectural detailing is being emphasised because the priority is always been given to the natural environment. Materials used are mainly concrete platforms, steel structures, prefabricated canvas for tents, brick walls for toilets, glass walls for tented villas, reception, glass houses and restaurants. Glass walls are used extensively to enable guests to immerse into the nature even when they are indoor. The architectural detailing are intentionally kept basic and free from overdoing. And it turned out to have its beauty on its own way. These buildings are aimed to provide treetop experiences to the visitors. Building platforms are built on stilts. Tents and other building platforms perch delicately on stilts. This can avoid from hurting the fragile roots of the existing trees and to allow the water to run through its original path. The structure can be removed from the site without affecting the jungle original state. Each treetop tent of villas and safari tents have a private deck that extends into the jungle. Some of the decks are made transparent with netting material on its own way to enable guests to appreciate plants in different perspectives and thus offering out-of-routine experiences. 
This was how we have transformed the existing rubber estate trails into safe and comfortable pathways and buggy tracks. The tracks were formed by avoiding the existing trees, plants, boulders, and thus they were well preserved. And we designed the gradient of the tracks carefully. And now they are tracks with gentle gradient, comfortable, safe, and easy to walk, even during night time. We designed this chair after an Adirondack outdoor chair. We modified and simplified it. We also work with the kitchen to design glamping recipes to give a complete glamping experience to the guests. After a few years of hard work in the wilderness, we have finally completed the project. Boulder Valley Glamping is now an ecotourism destination that you do not want to miss out. I always thought that taking seven years to complete Boulder Valley Glamping was a long time and it was tough until I read about this forest man of India, Jaitiv Payeng, who planted nearly 1,400 acres of forest on the Samba in Assam, India. He has planted trees for three months every year for 40 years. Today, the place is becoming a forest with tigers, elephants, rhinoceros and other wildlife. His story is truly inspirational, especially for those who doubt that one man can change the world. So do little things every day, consistently, and we will plant a forest in our lives. I visited Boulder Valley two years ago and was very impressed by the planning, the architecture and the environment that was created within the jungle setting. The buildings were sited very sensitively. It felt like as if they were always meant to be there. You got a sense that rather than cut down the trees or move a big rock or divert water, the architect actually took great pains to ensure that all of them were preserved that the buildings were well placed within the sites, were sensitively positioned, touching the ground very lightly. This is a very good example of how to design with nature rather than fight against it. Well, I think I've reached a point in my life that I've started to question whether the role of the architect in this changing environment is really relevant or important, or whether we have to actually rethink and recalibrate our attitude towards the built environment. We talk about sustainability, but every time we do a plan, we're actually clearing the site and putting artificial objects on it and using a lot of energy to put up the buildings. In fact, every act of building that we are part of takes something away from the natural landscape. In fact, I would like to ask the question, have human beings ever built anything that adds value to nature and Mother Earth? Name me one road, one bridge, one high rise that adds value to the Earth's ecology. It enriches man, it provides us with facilities, but it destroys nature. Selamat datang ke Borders Valley, Glamping, Penang. Saya Idris Yahya, uh, pengarah Jabat Kementerian Pancongan Seni dan Budaya Malaysia Negeri Pahang. Hari ini saya enjoy di Borders Valley, Lamping, Penang. Menariknya produk ini terletak di pinggir bandar Georgetown, Pulau Pinang. Apa yang lebih menarik, ia adalah kesungguhan dan inspirasi mendalam arkitek ke atas keindahan alam semula jadi dan juga kecintaan kepada flora dan fauna yang terdapat di tapak ini. Mereka bentuk dan pembangunan yang dibuat sangat-sangat teliti dengan mengambil kira aset semula jadi di tapak. Pembangunan dibuat mengambil kira keadaan kontur muka bumi bagi memastikan kesan yang sangat menima kepada alam semula jadi dan mengekalkan keindahannya. Sesungguhnya pembangunan, reka bentuk dan aktiviti di Borders Valley Glamping akan mampu menarik masyarakat untuk bercuti dalam suasana alam semula jadi. Dan 
mengembalikan masyarakat untuk menghargai hazanah alam negara. Hi guys, today I'm at Boulder Valley Glamping. Boulder Valley Glamping is an amazing place where I can find a lot of things that I don't see at home. I had my nature class, night jungle exploration, and animal observation. And the tracks are also safe and nice to walk on. This is the map. You can get it from the reception. Before we reach the glass house, we reach the jungle glades. This is where I had my birthday and I had my camp adventure too. It was so cool. This is Boulder Valley. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye. Uh, Nina, you need to uh, unmute Nina, yourself. Uh. You need to, yeah. Okay. So I'd like to share with you a little bit more about uh, Boulder Valley. Um, I further examined the queries of the market uh, in relation to glamorous camping and uh, glamping. So this is the Google trend that I searched uh, on the term of glamping in Malaysia. Uh, from the year of 2010 to 2020. And you can see that there's a clear uh, search from year 2010. I put on the, um, the pin. Okay. okay, so you can see that there's a clear search from year 2010 to uh, 2020. But there is a drop, there was a drop due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, lockdown worldwide. So you can see that in year 2013, we have announced that we were the first glamping resort in Malaysia uh, in this scale. But due to the difficulty of the site, we took seven years to complete it from conceptual planning, legalization, implementation to completion. And uh, throughout the years, uh, there were many other glamping sites pop up in the country. And so the statistics were contributed by other glamping sites over the years. So this was what I uh, learned from my belated uh, USM lecturer, uh, Chet Wan, about the Nyat Laku and Hasil. This is uh, what I am still using it as a tool to examine every stage in conceptual planning, designing, execution, until delivering of the end product. For this project, our net our intention is to assist humankind to return to the Mother Earth and to increase the awareness of the importance of nature. So to achieve this, we have to do this. But before that, there are two other uh, objectives, which is we uh, must give the priority to the uh, existing environment and to ensure minimum disturbance to the existing slopes, boulders, streams, and trees, and etc., because they are the main assets of the site. And finally, we want to develop a bespoken operational glamorous camping. So, based on the objectives, we have to examine our act that we must always adhere to our initial objective so that we will not run away from it and finally we can get a good product out of our objective 
which is uh, a safe and comfortable and easy uh, to uh, be accepted by the people and frequently visited by the people. And then if during the implementation stage, because we did it carefully with good environmental uh, management practice, and we get a good site, which is well planned and well maintained, which it achieved its equilibrium at the end. And finally, with a good planning and appropriate selection of materials, good connectivity within the site, um, a, a well-maintained environment and um, and with these objectives we finally get a good product which is minimum maintenance, smooth and well-managed and self-sustained uh, glamping sites. Okay. I need to share with you about this that a good environmental management plan during the implementation is very important um, that you can see that although this is that like, very insignificant to in terms of design, but this is the most important thing for an ecotourism project that you need to have a good drainage system. And so during the implementation uh, of works, we open up pathways, so slopes have been affected. So we have to immediately spray uh, hydro seeding and then put up the fibro mat. This is the best way to uh, prevent from slope erosion. So after three to four weeks, the grass has grown 20%. This is after three to four weeks. Okay. But that depends on the weather and soil condition. For slopes with a uh, very hard soil and uh, very difficult to grow uh, seeds, by applying the fibro mat is the best way to help the slope to grow grass. Three to four weeks. And this is after three to four months, the grass is fully grown by now. And after nine to 12 months, okay. And there are many types of hydro seeds you can choose. There are signal grass, Bermuda grass, and Razi grass. The one that we are using was Bermuda grass. And then the landscape evolved by itself. We did not interrupt it and we let it grow. This was after two years. And other plants started to overtake uh, the earlier plants. This was after five years. And you can see that the fetus survived and the grass has disappeared after five years, the uh, hardwood trees started to flowering. And this was what happened uh, during the implementation of the project in year 2017, where we are uh, about to launch a project, almost completed the project, but this was what happened during that year. On the 14th of September, there was an extraordinary amount of rainfall in Penang and it recorded 270 millimeter of rain in a day and the average rainfall was 25.6 millimeter. After that, um, uh, this was what happened, okay, and not long after that, in uh, the month of November, a freak storm hit Penang again and it created havoc in Penang. We got frightened because our project almost completed uh, and we don't know what to do. This was happened, okay? But because the drainage system in Boulder Valley Gramping was uh, properly done, so we faced only minor surface erosion. Uh, and uh, that was because of too much of rainwater uh, on the surface and the trees were uprooted. So this kind of erosion considered as minor. But the thing is that we were frightened by the act of God because of the heavy rain and the freak storm happened continuously. And then 
we started to question ourselves and whether are we going to the right direction? Have we done anything wrong? Or what shall we do? So we started to pray to God, pray to the mountain God. And we say, God, please forgive us if we have offended you. And please show us a direction forward. So what did the mountain God told us? What, did he, what was his reply? Refer to the law of Newton. So where there's an action, there will be always a reaction. So nature will find its own equilibrium. So then we uh, continue to move on to complete the project. And uh, we always learn that we have to listen to the nature and it gives hint to us to, uh, to, to, to decide what to uh, do next. And we have completed the project in year 2018, November. And the whole construction uh, period took three years. 80% of the work was to build pathways and jungle tracks. And this was what I've uh, shared in the video that I always thought that taking seven years to complete a project like this was too long and too tough for us. But until I read about this man, uh, the forest of India, uh, the forest man of India, Jadev Payeng, he planted 1,400 acres of forest on the same day of uh, Semba in Assam. That he was uh, to save the animals uh, in his homeland because after the, um, he started uh, planting the plants uh, since he was 16 years old uh, during floods that day because uh, that year there was a large number of snakes uh, ashore on the sand bar and after the water receded, he found the dead reptiles on the shore. So he decided to plant trees on the sand bar and has not stopped even after planting several thousands of trees. He planted, he watered, and he looked after the plants in the process to transform the desert into a forest. And the government, uh, the Assam government uh, forest department only learned about his uh, forest in year 2008 after a herd of uh, 100 wild elephants straight into the forest. So his story is truly inspirational, especially for those who doubt about that a man can change the world. So you can refer to the uh, YouTube. It's very interesting. So then we continue to create. That is about the Boulder Valley Gramping. Okay, then I'd like to share with you another uh, project uh, which we are uh, uh, completing recently um, and I was uh, rushing the video over the night <laughs> so wasn't in time to retrieve the original video footage so I uh, copied it from the YouTube videos uh, we had with my daughter so you may find some uh, irrelevant subtitles so just ignore it I will stop share and share with you another video. Enjoy the video. Hi, welcome to another video. Recently, we are completing another project. We call it Acre Plot Farm State. It was aimed to promote Kampong lifestyle and to create a good relationship between the occupants and the nature, which is the farm. This acre plot farm state was created not as a commercial project, nor meant for operational business purposes, meaning it is not to be operated as a resort or a homestay. It is a place where we promote Kampong lifestyle with a farm with a little hut to the occupants to stay and to rest and to carry out farming activities and to keep harvested crops. Kampong life is the least abrasive to the natural environment. 
In this place, we encourage people to start with one acre of land for self-sufficient farm state. This is where we can establish a self-sufficient food production, crop rotations, raising livestock, and etc. In this farm state, we have chosen Malay architecture because this architecture was developed locally and evolved from our homeland where the Malay houses are elevated on stilt to prevent from wild animal and flood. It is also very well ventilated and with good natural lighting. It is best suitable for a living like this. Again, we have simplified and modified it. Not much architecture detailing were emphasised. We took the building form and the spirit of Malay architecture. One of the reasons why we have chosen Malay architecture was because it is best representing a local architecture with an identity. But it has been neglected after the modern living in urbanization process, which has overtaken it for a long period of time. We hope our little effort will help to preserve our local architecture in a way. Self-sufficient farm state was very common during our grandparents' generations, but it seems to be diminishing over the urbanization process. So our intention is just to bring back this farm state lifestyle concept and to enable ourselves and our younger generations to have a chance to experience it and to build a good relationship with the nature, which is the farm. It was not in our plan, but the recent COVID-19 pandemic lockdown has made this concept even more relevant because of the realisation of people towards natural environment, food supply chain and self-sufficient living. It has always been my interest to go outdoors. Ever since I gave birth to my daughter, I wished my daughter can grow up not in the apartment nor with electronic gadgets all the time, but to have a lot of outdoor activities and to interact with the nature happily. Because of her, I thought of sharing my ideals and professional knowledge with parents, and this itself was an attractive force. So in order to spread our belief, we have established a YouTube channel, and we call it Chichen's World, which focuses on visiting natural sites, having fun and carrying out natural-related activities. That's all for this time. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. That's uh, Acre Plots Homestead. Uh, the sound may be a bit soft. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so over the years, um, uh, when we are carrying out the ecotourism project, uh, the Penang State Authority has uh, given us a lot of help and support in uh, uh, re realizing our projects. So over the implementation, I learned that uh, maybe a set of agro and ecotourism policy is needed in order to encourage more interested parties to take part. Mm, the recent projects are being approved based on urban development policies and guidelines. So they are kind of quite difficult to, to comply. Um, and I think they, are, they may not be suitable for agro and ecotourism too. For example, carpark requirements, uh, the road width and etc. Because these are the requirements that will hurt and destroy the environment. To me, Agro and ecotourism is uh, very simple. It is formed by two words, uh, which is which are e ecology and tourism. So the priority should be given to the natural environment and the green experiences uh, itself. So in this area, we should refer to our neighboring countries like Thailand, uh, Indonesia, and etc. Um, their openness and relaxation in rules and guidelines uh, enable more interesting uh, ideas, out-of-the-box ideas to pop up. But more importantly, I think uh, the project owners and operators, they have to strictly uh, 
practice self-regulation attitude towards the nature during the implementation and uh, management. Otherwise, everyone will eventually suffer from the destroyed natural environment. Thank you. Yeah. Nina, um, thank you for sharing your works with us today. We learned so much from you this evening. I know you since year 2000, which was uh, 13 years ago, if you, can, if you still can remember. Today I could see that you have achieved so much within these 20 years. In Chinese saying, Yang sang yao ge to sap nin. For those who do not know, uh, it means how many 10 years you can have within a lifetime. Um, in the first 10 years that I know you, you work very hard, you study very hard, and later you became a registered architect. In the second year, I know you, you produced two priceless architecture masterpieces that bedazzled us and became a talking point to most of the Nangites. You also created uh, activities for humans to interact in the forest. I, I can't wait to see what you will surprise us in the next third installment of your architecture practice. It is also interesting that you involve your daughter during your architecture journey, which illustrates that you are always wearing two hats at the same time, as a mother and as an architect. That includes while documenting your work instead of her playing iPad. Without further ado, maybe I should, I mean, we should pro uh, proceed with the Q&A. Um, Maybe I will ask the first question. In your talk, you mentioned that one man who changed the world, who is also known as Forest Man in India. How did he impact your words? Thank you. Thank you, Zuming. Thank you very much for your introduction just now. Yeah, I found this Forest Man in India recently, and uh, he was truly inspiring and encouraging. And I realized that nothing is too difficult after I watched his video. Um, I was amazed by his uh, not giving up spirit and perseverance and it was the energy that I gained from him so that I can continue to create because uh, we were tired out after the first project and um, we took our team took a few months to rest and after we have rested enough physically for a few months and then we continue with our second project on site, which was the Acre Plots Farm State. So this time our team found it uh, much easier because we are better equipped with the experience we gained from the previous project. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you, Architect Nina, for the enlightening uh, presentations. Uh, Architect Nina, we have a question from our audience. Okay, the question is from Jackie Lim. What is the most challenging for this project? Can share more? Because we understand that uh, we have to protect the forest people and also submit the uh, support and also support the economy growth at the same time. So the large number of people that coming in uh, into uh, the community also potentially can be very damaging to the local culture and nature. So uh, can you let us know how you deal with all these issues? Yeah, after the project was completed, we found it uh, fun to recall all the memories and until it was completed, we felt nothing was too difficult. But uh, there are a few things that we have to uh, take note is that uh, uh, to achieve a balance between uh, preserving the nature environment promote the site to more people and to develop the site into a self-sustained ecotourism eco site uh, is the most important thing. And um, this, uh, this, the conflict uh, between legalization and to preserve the nature is crucial to me because uh, presently there's no uh, ecotourism policy or guideline uh, available. So the present approvals were granted based on urban development uh, guideline. So there are, uh, uh, there are many guidelines are uh, detrimental to the environment. For example, uh, the car park provision, uh, the 
uh, or the uh, the driveway, the width of the driveway. These are the compliance that we have to comply, but uh, hurt the environment. So uh, other than that was, um, but we found it uh, uh, interesting was that we have no way to do planning on drawings. And most of the contractors and uh, the workers are inexperienced in this field. Uh, so we have to work uh, our way up. Um, anyway, um, getting large numbers of uh, visitors coming in to the site uh, is a positive problem. Okay, This can be resolved with good tourism management, but more importantly, the project uh, owners and operators must have a self-regulated attitude towards the environment. Okay. All right, I would like to ask you the next question, um, which is that, uh, okay, you spent seven years to complete your Borders Valley project. If, my client, if I told that to my client, probably he, he would sack me first, but I think your case is a bit special. Okay, um, every uh, detailed drawings were customized based on site and, uh, and its surrounding. How did you sustain the project financially with so many unknown? Do you even have tender drawings? Okay. Um, okay, we uh, run some of our other projects uh, concurrently but uh, with a different team. But uh, for the site, we kept the buildings very simple, okay, and they are prefabricated and sitting on concrete platforms. The buildings were mainly tents with canvas, while the reception, restaurant, and event place were built on steel, uh, with steel, uh, steel structures uh, and glass walls. And these prefabricated tents were brought to the site for installation after the platforms and the tracks were completed. Um, it was the building platforms and the tracks that we have to build according to the site. Okay, during the setting out, we have to avoid uh, from mature trees and to ensure the footings are not hurting the roots of the trees. We did have drawings. We did have drawings for the manufacturers and contractors, uh, but we did not go through any tender process. We were happy enough as long as uh, the contractors were willing to take up the jobs due to the location uh, of the site, accessibility, and the profit margin they can get from the project. Sometimes we were rejected by the contractors for the reason that their workers were not willing to come in to work in this kind of site. Okay, anyway, to go back to your first part of the question, we spent uh, two years for conceptual planning, two years of legalization, and three years of implementation. This project was self-funding and cross-funded by our other projects initially. Yeah, so you will not be sad. Uh, okay, Architect Nina, we have another question from the audience uh, from Lang Chi Yong. Okay, good afternoon. Is the land is under agriculture category? If yes, how is the process of development ecotourism product under agriculture land? Uh, hi, hi Yong. Uh, thank you for your question. Yeah, uh, the land was uh, situated at a very high uh, sensitive area. The land was uh, agriculture, it is in the land and many other factors. So we have to go through hill and excision, uh, conversion, uh, the environmental impact assessment, traffic impact assessment, geotechnical report, and every almost every, every steps of the process you have to go through. So because um, it is in a very highly sensitive area, so uh, we went through a very uh, uh, strict scrutiny mean by the officers. We can understand they are, that their hands are tight and they were very, very strict, okay? So we have to uh, uh, went through persuasion, explanation, and sometimes we have to really fight through our case that uh, until they are convinced. And there were an officer <laughs> have to explain to him at this Five times until he said that 
Nina, it's enough. I've listened to you too many times. I said, it's okay, it's okay. You listen again and you understand what we are trying to do. That was the process that we have to go through in order to get approval. So, but um, uh, 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 we, we, we find that uh, we also need to find some solutions uh, in order to comply because uh, the existing uh, guidelines are not suitable for the site sometimes. So, uh, but, but the solutions may not be necessary, may not be suitable for the environment, but we still do it. Mm -hmm. That was the, 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 the situation. Um, okay, Nina, are you satisfied with Boulder's value project? And may I know why? Mm. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, it was done out of love, out of craziness, and it was a victory by getting the end product, by keeping our actions adhering to our initial objectives. And you know what? Uh, after four months of the completion, there was a man came by, uh, who came by to the site and he fell in love with the place immediately and insisted to take over the place and the management within two weeks. You believe it or not? He felt that he was acquiring a masterpiece that cannot be repeated and cannot be found elsewhere. We couldn't believe it in the beginning, but it happened. Two weeks, really, it happened. And we took a long time to accept the reality. Interesting to find out more, isn't it? Zemin, thank you. Oh, all right, OK. Uh, one, uh, this one, I, uh, uh, OK. If I am a genie and I could grant you one wish, what do you wish that you could have done to Boulder's Valley that you didn't or couldn't do? Jenny, Jenny, I wish, I wish that uh, the new management will continue with the spirit of Boulder Valley Grandview. We were not in time to complete the programs that we planned for the people who come to visit Boulder Valley Grandview because uh, it was handed over to the new owner four months after uh, the completion. So no long, uh, not long after that, we passed baton to the new owner by taking into the consideration that we are not uh, we are not a service industry based company and uh, i wish also that uh, genie that more people will come to boulder valley and to enjoy the true nature uh, in the safe and comfortable environment in the jungle setting that we have used our heart to create for them Zooming. I counted two wishes. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I'll, 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 next question. What's the biggest lesson that you learned from these two projects? Perhaps uh, maybe you can share with us. Uh, yes, simply we must always listen to the nature and let nature take its own course. Uh, what, what, what about like councils? Um, Comments. Do you listen to them or do you listen to the nature more? <laughs> um, listen to the nature. <laughs> we we have to balance between two. That was the difficult part. Yeah. From Sometimes we have to fight and to look like what I explained just now. We have to persuade. We have to explain. We have to fight. And if they really cannot, then we comply. Mm -hmm. I could see that you are very persistent and a very um, high spirit kind of a, a female architect, I would say. Ah, that, that is good. Uh, perhaps me, do you have any other question that you would like to ask? Yeah, uh, I think Nina, um, I have a question to you. Okay, uh, it's from me. I want to ask you, ecotourism has been gained popular, I mean gaining popularity. What is your message to the traveller and how to be a responsible traveller? Mm. Mm. Ecotourism is no doubt the up and coming trend. People tend to choose green accommodations and to immerse themselves in authentic experiences. So, by going into a natural environment 
uh, for exceptional experiences or out of routine experiences. We are always subject to events that we are not familiar with or things that we uh, did not expect uh, to happen in the nature environment. So everyone has a responsibility to take care of their uh, own safety or their family's uh, uh, members' uh, safety. I think safety is very important. Uh, perhaps last question from me because I don't see any more questions from uh, the attendees. All right, I think the last question is sounded like okay. In your slide, I could see that uh, your 10 year old daughter was also involved in both the projects. How did you mentor or convince her to do that? Most children at the age were probably still holding iPad in their hands. Please share with us. Okay, yeah, it got the reason itself is an education. This YouTube exercise is an education program that we are building recently. After the completion of Photo Valley Grampi, we realized that we need to spread our belief to more people. And we are happy to see more parties participating in this field. Uh, I believe in uh, the power of uh, social media, like Facebook, uh, YouTube platform, which it has a much longer lifespan with a wider dissemination to the content than physical talk or newspaper which lasts only a few hours to the limited audience. For this channel, the audience are mainly parents with children and nature lovers. So for my daughter, we uh, because of fun and play, so I there's no sweat uh, at all to get her involved in um, doing the video. And we started the learn about the videoing and pick up tricks on uh, YouTubing, visiting nature sites and we had a lot, a lot of fun. And I also learned a lot from her. I enjoy seeing uh, her building up her perseverance and toughness uh, in taking the outside weather, heat under the hot sun, uh, wind, mosquitoes, hungry while taking videos. So we are waiting for the lockdown to go off and we can go out to play again. So our next series will be uh, farming and cooking with vegetable direct from the farm. So do like and subscribe to Tian's World. See you in our next uh, coming video. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, Nina, we still have uh, some questions from the audience. Okay, uh, we have a question from Endeli Chan. Uh, any alternative green energy do you wish to introduce for your future project? Yeah, uh, most of our, our projects, uh, since uh, 12 years ago, we started our uh, company. We uh, basically design-based company. So we believe in uh, uh, passive design. Passive design. Uh, with green features. Passive design meaning that you design to reduce use of energy rather than to use something to reduce the energy. Yeah, Nina, we have another question, very tough one. <laughs> also from Andalin Chan, with the effort and sharing, will there be any effort to restore Botak Hill? <laughs> Yes. Uh, that you have to ask the owner. Yeah, you have to ask the owner. <laughs> Seriously, I've no. Okay, I've not, okay. Uh, I've, I've not. Uh, I've not give a deep thought about this uh, before. Yeah. Because uh, in order to open up a place or in order to restore, you need to have uh, a. a, a full uh, uh, considerations uh, it's not uh, in terms of geotechnical environment and many other all right um, let's wrap up uh, today's um, sharing session thank you nina for sharing with us today uh, we hope that you we could arrange more sessions like this in the future with parent chapter after the global pandemic is over which is quite soon who knows perhaps I could see you in the middle of jungle when we meet next time. All right, before we end uh, this session, perhaps um, we can turn on our camera so that we can have a group, a group photograph sessions. Turn off camera.
Uh, I think just let the PAM uh, central. PAM central, yeah. All right, PAM, you, you, I will capture our print screen from my side. Okay, one, two, three. Done. All right, Nina, thank you again and hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you all.